together with needle and thread and then we're going to apply it on the top of the donuts as well right i'm going to do the purple one i'm just going to move these out just out of shot for a sec but we're probably going to come back to it um, when we need to so i'm going to do this purple one I'm going to need the donut. I'm going to need a couple of colors of seed beads, although you could do this with one color of seed beads if you wanted to, but we're going to use, we're going to use a couple of colors just to highlight the how pretty they are because once you add like a little decoration in there, then you can really like you know do, do, you can do all sorts of different things. It doesn't have to be just one line. You could start with one color in the middle and then you know do more colors as you coming out so i'm just going to use this couple of colors i'm just going to pop some of this darker one on the side there i know it's just off camera here because we're not using that and i'm going to bring it in when we are going to start using it right needle and thread yeah. i i use superlon d and I'm just gonna, when I use Suplon comes in so many different colors and that's why I love it. I am going to match up the color of the Suplon with the color of my seed beads and I'm using the nearest one as well. Now don't forget here you're trying to match up sort of two kind of seed beads but I always like to go with the lighter one. So I'm gonna use these, this is probably the closest one which is the pink with it. It's back in Suplon now, yeah. And then I am going to thread this, just very quickly thread my needle and we're going to get started. We're going to start right in the middle and then we're going to work our way outside. Just thread my needle. This is always like you have to hold, almost hold your breath <laughs> when you're threading your needle right i've got a good arm spam i'm going to start i'm going to zoom you in a little bit more so you're going to see more what i am doing there we go so we're going to start by picking up four of these lovely seed beads just like that and i'm going to take this all the way down now I'm going to come, this is my tail end because there is my bobbin. I'm going to come through all of those four seed beads one more time, just like that, and pull this up. Can you see that? We've made like a little, our first little circle. That's actually our right one. Now I'm going to go through the first through one more time. You can knot your tail end and your working again together here to form a nice and strong base i don't like uh, to do that because then the knot could go into one of those little beads and once it goes into one of those little beads it will be really hard to go past it as you're working with size 11 seed beads and i'm going to pull this nice and tight because i'm on opposite ends with my designs i can really pull it nice and tight I'm going to wrap this around my finger so I can suspend it here. So we're going to go around in circles. Um, you, As you can see, we got a thread path going around there in circle. And as we're coming out of this one, we're going to pick up two seed beads, the same color, and go through the next one. So I haven't jumped any seed beads. I am just came out on one. And then I went through the next one. And then I'm going to be picking up another two and going through the next one then i'm turning it picking up another two and going through the next one and finally i'm doing the side four just one second i'm just going to take very quickly take my bracelets off because it gets caught on it and the thread gets caught on it every single time i'm pulling it through so i am with the side four at the moment and when you are on the last side you not long have to go through that seed bead what you have to go through but you're going to have to step up as well so when you're doing your fourth side you always you pick up two seed beads and instead of just going through one you have to go through two so you have to go through the one underneath and the one on the top as well to step up to be able to add further beads now when i pull this up pull this nice and tight you're gonna see that our beadwork is become symmetric just make sure that thread is not twisted there 
Just pull this out a sec. Because I just want these two little seed beads to sit on the top what's underneath. Come on, thread, twist out. That's it. Be good to go. Usually I hold it sort of in between my fingers, but I just want to try to show you as much as I can. So you can see our beadwork becomes becomes symmetric and that's where we need to be. And now we're going to go ahead and add another row. So our first row at the bottom, in the, right in the middle, and then we got two seed beads sitting on top of either side. And then I am going to turn this and keep continuous. So I'm going to pick up two seed beads and I'm going to, as I'm coming out of this one, so these are going to be, when I'm adding two seed beads, they are going to become my corner beads. And when I'm adding one seed bead, that's going to be my sort of side, a side bead. So I am at the corner at the moment. I'm going to pick up two and just jump to the next one. And then I'm going to pick up one and I'm going to go through the next corner just like that. And then I'm picking up two seed beads and going through the next one. So I'm just going around in circles. And then I'm picking up one and going to the next corner. And you can see when we're picking up one, there's a tiny little gap here. There's a tiny little gap here which needs to be filled. So that's all I'm doing by adding that one seed bead in there, the filling that tiny little gap and pulling it tight. And then I'm going to continue all the way around. Once you have done a couple of rows, you actually got something to hold on to and then it becomes, everything becomes easier. So again, I'm going through the corner, pulling it nice and tight. Then I'm picking up a seed bead and going to the next corner. And turning. And am I on the last side now so once you get to the last side your beadwork actually here is trying to close up because we are doing more than a square we need this beadwork to buckle over and once we do a couple more rows you're going to see exactly what i mean so i'm going to pick up two seed beads again and i'm going to go to this corner and then I'm going to pick up one seed bead and we almost have to force this one in where we need it to go. And this is where a lot of people make a mistake by picking up one and just going through that last one because you can't really see the gap where these last seed beads need to be fit in, which is right in here on your beadwork. But I know I'm on my last side, so I know I don't just have to go through one seed bead. I need to go to through two of them so I'm going to that one and I'm exiting to the end and then pulling this up nice and tight. When I pull this up I do a couple of little pulls and sometimes you can also hear the bead popping in the place where it needs to pop into and it's already start to become a little bit wonky your beadwork already start to buckle if I turn it sideways can you see that it's already started to buckle on the top so it's not quite flat anymore it's it's doing what it's supposed to be doing and it's turning so from here I'm going to keep going round and round and adding my beads I'm going to pick up two more and go to the corner but now on this row, instead of just filling one on the side, I need to fill two seed beads in. So I'm going to pick up one, go through. So here, if I bring this a little bit closer, you can see some of the beads are sticking out a little bit more and some of the beads are sitting further in. And that's what we're trying to fill the gap on the top of those beads which are sitting further in. And when I pull this up, this bead is just going to pop in there. So this is called peyote stitch. And this bell using two different stitch so on the corner you are doing like a herringbone weave picking up two and with that jumping over any beads you're going through the next one and in on the sides you are doing peyote stitch where you pick a bead up you miss the one out which is 
sort of sitting further in and go to the next one which is sticking out for you and just keep going around like that all the way and I'm just going to pick I'm just going to do another couple of rows very quickly just going around adding the corners and then again adding the side there's someone at the front door and adding the side again and adding the side again and you're going to do this until you have the amount of rows you want now depending on what the size of your donor is because some of them can be smaller some of them can be bigger but think about it you don't just have to do it you, you can do it for other things as well not just donuts I guess you can do it for crystal pendants where you got a hole to hook into or you can do it for other bits of pieces where and I'm just going up like that and now it's really really buckling show you so after this row it's buckling even more now and picking up that shape so once it sort of starts to pick up this shape I usually do, just hold it in my hand I hold it with the there's a couple of ways I like to hold it I do hold it folding it over or I can hold it by holding on to the end my tail end I sort of wrap it around my fingers and then I push against with my index finger and my thumb, I push against um, my beads. So then I can see this more like almost like opened up in front of me. I can see all four of the corners and I can go and add my beads that way. Just make sure it's nice and tight. So again, I'm going to go around and do the same thing. I'm at the corner. So I'm going to pick up two. And then I'm going to be in the middle and picking up just one. And after this row, we can introduce a second color. You can, in fact, introduce a second color or third color. You can do as many colors as you like. You could make each color a different row. You could have like a rainbow. That's an idea. <laughs> That's an idea. We could do like a rainbow, a rainbow bell. That would look really good. So if any of you do, will do a rainbow bell, pop it in the group so we can all see it. And I'm adding the corner. And picking up the sides. When we introduce the next color, then you're going to see it even better how, how this all fits together. And coming through the next one and coming through the last one and then at the corner again so I'm turning I quite like this sort of pattern or quite like these sort of beaded bills because they don't necessarily take too long to do so I can probably about half an hour maybe 40 minutes uh, depending on the size I guess if I just making a smaller one for a smaller crystal then it's even less time I can beat it up in like you know half less than half an hour but it just gives that little intricate detail on the top of your pendant and it's just on the top and just makes it even more interesting and I really really do love it and you can apply it in so many, once you learn this technique, you can apply it in so many different ways. For example, yeah, if you want to make like a beaded star, this is the building blocks to make a beaded star as well, or other shapes. I'm on the last edge now, and then we're going to, the last side, and then we're going to change the color, and you're going to see how it's sort of, I when, it, when we change the color, that's, for me, it's that's when it becomes more like comes to life because using another color is just highlights what you are doing. So I'm not just going through one, but I'm going to go through two. Sometimes you can stitch into both seed beads at the same time. Sometimes you have to do it separately. So can you see how much is that 
buckling now and it is sort of standing up on its own. So now I'm going to go ahead and introduce the second color. So I'm just going to pull this out to the side and I'm going to bring some of these in. And I'm going to start. I'm going to do the same thing what I've been doing, but I'm just going to add a different color. That's what I'm doing. So there's nothing hard. There's nothing, no, no, no trickery here. You're just using a different color and that will create that lovely line. As you're going around and round, adding the next color. So the kit comes with fully illustrated instructions, which is a PDF. And there it shows you the diagrams, sort of <laughs> row by row, what you need to do. I This is not, I wouldn't really say this is like the a, a complete beginner's stitch or, or not, not, not like in the stitch, but complete beginner's projects. But if you are determined, then I always say a confident beginner can achieve anything if you got good instructions. And if you have, if you get the kit, you get the PDF with it, you can just sit down and start beading. And then you got, you can come back and rewatch the video and refer back to the, refer back to the video as well. I really, really do love this one. So can you see by adding that second color, how it's, it just like brings it to life a little bit because just using one color for me is just a little bit flat. And when we introduce the second color, then it just really that contrasted like very, very well. I, I love it. But then you could experiment with all sorts of different colors. The best thing is to use even beads because uneven beads can be uneven beads can can make your shape a little bit oblong so when you use even beads your pattern will be even better your beadwork will be even better So if you don't want to buy the materials, you just want, want to buy the PDF that's available on there as well. And the PDF on its own is $1.99. But with the kit, which is makes up to two pendants, all the materials in there with the PDF, that is like £7.60. The cheapest one and the most expensive one is £9.40. And that makes it two pendants. And you get the PDF with it as well. And that's on the website, all the links in the description. So do check that one out as well. Make sure you like, subscribe and turn the notification on for us. We are live on YouTube and on Facebook at the moment. So you get notification next time when we go live. At the moment we go live every day. At 10 a.m. show you all sorts of different techniques. And I'm adding the last one there. I could just go back to color one and then have, have just sort of a little dotted, let me just pop this down so you can see it. Have just sort of have a little dotted color in here. That could work as well. Um, however, I would like this to be, so if I added, going back to color A, and I added that in here. Can you see this color bead just gonna be like one seed beads worth of it? But I want this more like a line. It's, it, it's up to you, you could do either design. I want this more as a line, so I'm gonna do another row of this second color. And as you can see, I'm holding on to it folded over now. That's it. I'm very quickly going to whisk around this. There we 
go. So you can make it as big or as small you want it to. If you've got a bigger donut or a bigger pendant you want to go over it, you can make it even bigger than that. If I had a small donut, and I'm, I see in my draw if I've got something smaller because I really want to show you that by not making the bell like this size would be perfect. Just go around this one and I'll show you for a smaller pendant as well. And especially if you sell your jewelry, this is great because, like, you know, it just gives that little bit of personal, intricate detail on the top that makes your beadwork more interesting. And you didn't have to bead the whole pendant because you used a hematite donut or what any other donuts you want to use, you or pendants, you just added this onto the top of it. It works with crystal pendants too. There we go, and I'm just going to zip up, run up this side. Just like that. I could just sit there in front of the TV and do these. Right, we've got a question here from Jody, wondering what you do, and I'm, I'm going to highlight this, and I'm actually going to tell you about this, wondering what you do with the star funds, a friend of mine donates to charity, so what we decided, what we're going to do with the star funds, because loads of, loads of you have been donating stars for us, and, and we are really, really grateful, me and Sarah, but both of the Sarahs, me and Sarah has been doing the face, me and Sarah Millslop has been doing the Facebook Live since 23rd of March last year, and quite honestly, between 23rd of March when we went into lockdown to November the 1st we hardly had any days off and even after that we worked like we worked a lot I think in 2020 I had maybe 15 days off because if you if I wasn't in front of the camera I was behind it answering questions and doing all sorts of bits of pieces so what we decided with Sarah's that once this situation is over and we are able to we're going to spend the stars to treat us treat ourselves to go for a spa day or something you know because like I, I see that the stars like just a little contributions to really show us you appreciate appreciate us and we just wanted to do something. So we're going to go for a little pamper day or, or something like that, De depending on how, how much we're going to have in the end. But um, that, that, that's that's what the aim is. So we added the second color. Let me just grab, I actually caught, and I think I, they are on the website somewhere as well, some small donuts. So can you see a smaller top? We'll do a smaller donut. Have I got any crystals in here? Crystal pendants. Well, I'm not going to. Oh, there is one. I found the crystal pendant. I don't know where is this from, so please don't ask me the, if you got it or not. But you could have it over a crystal pendant as well, just by having that little bell. And I wouldn't, if I had something like this, I probably wouldn't make the bell bigger. I would then connect this front with the back and that would be it on the top of my crystal pendant. Oh, hematite ones, there we go. This ones, I know they are definitely on the website. This one, because you hold, got the whole side to side, I would then weave my thread down to the bottom and just sort of sew in from one side to the another side. But again, that would be my little decoration on the top of that particular little pen. Then just make it a little bit more than just adding a, you know, just a ring to it or anything like that. So I think that's that that's this is like a really a great way to highlight any of the pendants. Right, let's get back to the donut. I am gonna have to <laughs> add a few more rows. So this I, I, I can see like we've been live for quite some time. I hope you're right to hang around because I need to add another three or four more rows before we can add it over the donut itself. So I'm just gonna go back with color number one. I changed my colors again. 
and very quickly I'm going to bead down on, on the sides just to add a few more rows. But while I'm adding these rows, if you got any questions, please put a Q in front of your question so I can very easily identify it and then I can answer any questions while I'm beading these sides, making my beaded bell just a little bit bigger. Oh, Alison saying, you two are amazing and absolutely the best. You would make a lockdown on oh, other side of the world. Thank you so much. Uh, it's It feels so good to to sort of to be appreciated. And it's I'm really glad that we can make a little bit of difference for people, like especially some people if they're on their own. We can, we can be in their lives every day and just start to cheer you up with little projects. So I'm just going to bead on this side. Oh, Lucy is saying most of us could just sit and watch you all day. Oh, thank you. I could definitely talk all day, definitely. And my, my little Christopher, and you know my Christopher, I think, I don't know if it's genetic or I don't know what it is, but he's exactly like me. He could talk the socks off a cat. I think that's the, is that the expression? Is that what you, you say, like talking the socks off a cat? Um, he could definitely do that. He could like, when you have to go somewhere in the car and like, like for example, in normal situations, if you were going to the airport to pick somebody up, it's an hour's drive, or if you're driving somewhere and, and he's next to you, he will not stop talking all the way through. He would just go na 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 all the way along. And I, I, I then, I sort of, think about myself and I'm feeling like, oh my word, is this me? <laughs> is is this what I'm like when we go on a long journey? Just talk, 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 talk. Ne never be quiet. But he's exactly the same as me. Lucy is different, but then Lucy, when Lucy tells a story, that's there is no beginning, no middle, no end to it. There's nothing. It's just a story flowing from one sentence to another and it never ends. When, but uh, Simon's dad is like that a little bit. He he can have a he can he can tell a long story. So I think Lucy maybe got it from him. Definitely must be something in genetics. So I'm just running down on this side again. Um, everything we say talk the hind legs of a donkey. I never heard that one before, Carol. That we learn something new every day. Every day. Right, so I added this row. I'm gonna go and add another row. Once I'm down, so don't forget, once you're down on your last last side, you're not just going through the end one, you have to go through th two of the seed beads. So I'm gonna go through one, and two and if you're just joining us then we are doing this beaded bell for this lovely pendant once we finish the live you can go back and you can view view it from the beginning how we started we're just going to go around in circles as per our pattern and add i like to add two different colors just to highlight the colors or you could do as many as you like. It would be amazing to do a rainbow one. If I get some time this week, I promise, I'll sit down and make a rainbow one and I will pop it up in the, I will pop, it, pop a picture on the website because I think that would look amazing. Just one side done. And then I'm turning it doing the next one and adding this side <laughs> Luna is saying highlight of my day would be lost for that oh bless you 
we do other things as well we do we have got a beat club which Lona is actually a part of it she's in Thursday, Thursday night gang uh, with the beat club we do zoom classes over the internet and each week we are doing something different so last week we actually did the beaded star we did spiral stackers with mini duos we did chain mail we because the beat clubs are two hours long we have got more of a time to go in depth and do a little bit more sort of complicated makes and with the beat club what's great about it that i'm there there for the whole time and if if you want me i can show you i don't mind that that, that is what i'm there for i can show you 10 times how to start how to stitch how to do something and it's a really not nice bunch nice bunch of people in there so i can highly recommend so do check that out if you're looking something extra to do with the weekly classes it's really really social as well because like you with through zoom you get to talk to each other and you you week by week you get to know the other persons in your class and it's just really great to to interact with each other and to make friends as well because a lot of those ladies they made friends with each other and I know like you talk to each other outside Lucy's saying beat club is fab Brenda say, I have lots of pendants to use up, so maybe star segments for those instead, yes. You could do that too. And he's saying seven colors in a rainbow. I mean, you don't, you don't, you could do ombre. You don't have to use exactly the rainbow colors. You could do light pink to dark pink or light pink to dark purple or teal to turquoise, blue to ice blue gold to brown you could do all sorts of different colors whichever one you prefer what I am going to do I'm just going to come here and just move this down a tiny bit because I can see that uh, I uh, keep moving the beadworks towards me so I can see it better and I'm going off camera for you so just move that down a tiny bit move my camera a tiny bit so hopefully I won't disappear off the bottom. So now I added a couple of color A. Now let's have a look. I'm gonna insert my donut in here and just see how much more I need. So I could sew this together, but then there wouldn't be any room to add any necklaces on the top. So we do need to make it a tiny bit bigger. So when I turn it to the side, let me just turn this one. Can you see there is a gap there where my necklace is going to sit just there? Can you see there is that gap? How is it holding it up? So we just need a, a couple more rows. Now we could either do color A or we could do another two rows of color B and then finish off with that one. Any, any design you really wanted to, you could do. I'm actually going to change to color B again. So have another, another line coming in with that darker color. So I'm going to move this to the out. And I'm going to move these seed beads in just here on the side. So I'm going to go in with color B and I'm going to do another couple of rows. And pull this up nice and tight. I am quite a tight beader, so my tension is on the tighter side. And with this one, the more tighter you keep your tension, the more your beadwork is going to fold over and buckle. So they're definitely same in knitting, same in crocheting, same in any sort of crafts, depending on your tension depending on how precise you are the, the certain projects are going to be better for you so if you're a tight beater like i am this is perfect for you and i'm down to one side so each side once you once you as you're coming out can you see that's like a triangle so it's each side is getting bigger as we go along and each row as we're adding you having one extra seed bead on the side there Just turning it, make sure the tail is out of my way. 
and running back up on that side i reckon another couple of rows and then we will see how it fits over the donut Lucy just posted the link for the Facebook groups. If you are not a member of one of the, we got a group on Facebook called Handmade by Totally Beads. There is, I, I, I don't know, about 2,700, 2,600 people, a lot of people in there, like-minded people sharing their pictures of jewelry sharing their pictures what they be making it not doesn't just have to be totally beads related we just wanted a safe place for you or to when you can mingle it is only sort of people in most of the people in there they only find the group through our facebook lives and hence that's why we didn't add anything in the group name sort of jewelry or anything like that because I don't the, the main goal is with that group is not to make it huge and have millions of people in there the main group is the for that group is keep it nice and a safe place for everybody to have to share your inspiration to talk to each other and find like-minded people and I love it. I, I do love it because I, I pop in there and there is so many people from young people for to, to all the people in there showing their inspirations and what they've been making. Is nothing is too complicated, nothing is too, you know, because don't forget, somebody else might be only started, somebody else might be only beading for one month and showing them something really difficult, it might put them off, but if you put something in there which is like very a beginner's necklace or a beginner's bracelet or, or, or a beginner's project, it's really, it's really lovely that what I loved yesterday, I seen Dean Rivet and I'm going to call him out. He's, he's so lovely. He's a young little lad and he's been beading since I think lockdown. He's been following us and be doing all sorts of different projects. And he loved Christopher's button man. He made a few of those. And yesterday he put a picture up. He made a beaded heart of um, what Joe was doing last week. And I just loved it. I really, really do love it. And I think he's such an incredible young man. So well done, Dean. And I'm just doing the last side of this one. And I'm going to pop to the top. I'm going to do another row. Just so I make the bail a little bit bigger. And I have that gap where I can add the necklace now. Thinking about how big gap you have to add for this is think about what necklaces do you want to add through it. If it's just a little chain, what you want to wear it with, then the gap doesn't have to be too thick because you can, one side of the chain is always just got like a little tag or a little extension, something on there, or a little ring what you closing your lobster clasp into and on the other side you would have your lobster clasp or a bolt ring or, or some some sort of clasp so for in that case you don't need a hugely gap a large gap above it if you want to add something like i added that necklace onto the top of it where there is a magnetic clasp on there this is a smaller magnetic clasp so it's only eight millimeter but it has to fit through the gap Oh, Joe just said, Dean and Edward are both great. Love seeing the mix. I love seeing their mix as well. And, and that makes me feel so glad because they're younger. So I'm not, I, I'm, Dean is under 18 actually. And he's just like, you know, that's the next generation. And it's just so great that they do beading and they do, they enjoy it and, and interested in it and, and doing it. I, I really love of it. Do you know how to do competent ge geometric beading? Um, Kathleen is asking. So if you want to do geometric beading, we have been we done a few different bits of pieces. But if you look up, there is a lady called, she's a British designer. Her name is Jean Power. Look her up on the internet. She does do her own patterns. She does, she's released uh, quite a few books now. I think she's like four or five books she did. She does a lot of beading on geometric um, beading and I love I love her work I do follow her personally and, and she's a friend of mine so look her up and have a look at her work because she does amazing geometric work oh Dorothy's saying Dean you are doing so well yes he is 
I think, Dean, we're going to have to have you on. I don't know if you're watching. It's half term at the moment, so, so you might be watching. But I think you're gonna have, we're going to have to have you on on a Sunday beat at some point. How about that? We have to check with your mum, of course. But I think you're going to have to come on one of the Sunday beaters and just see. So we can all see you how incredible. Everybody can see how incredible you are. How about that? I'm just running up. I've got two more signs and then we're going to try it independent, the, the donut again, to see if you need. But it's like any time when you're doing something like this, just stop and try your pendant, your donut or anything you're doing to try it inside there and see if you need any more. It's always easier to add a row than <laughs> have to be taking one away. So as I'm going around, I can just stop. And have a look. Right, I'm, I'm got two more sides, and then we're gonna try it in. Oh, Lucy's saying yes, that would be amazing. Catherine is saying beautiful color combos. Thank you. If anybody's got any question, please put a Q in front of your question and just pop it in there again. I might have missed it earlier. Just pop it in there again if you got a question. So I can answer it for you. Sometimes the chat goes past so fast that I miss the question. I'm just doing this side. You can combine any colors you like. You can make your own color combination. As I said, you don't just have to use two colors. You can use as many as you like. Each row could be a different color. Alone is saying that would be great as well. That's for, uh, I think, Dean. So I'm just going through. And I'm coming down on this side. And I'm going to try it. Is this tubular purity? Elaine is saying no. Tubular purity looks completely different. This is a combination of two stitches. So when we are on the corner, and let me just get down and I pull it apart and I show you, we are doing like a one herringbone stitch and then the rest of them are purity. And because our rounds or our sides are larger than the circumference of the beadwork would be, that's why it buckles over and that's why we get this lovely shape. If I just added three, and not, if I started with three seed beads at the beginning and not four, then I would get more of a flatter shape. But because I started with four, it's buckling over. And that, that's what we want to do. We want it to buckle over. Right, I'm just last side, adding the last few beads, and then we're going to try it. I could have started these two colors further up if I wanted to. So I could have had more of sort of a line. I could have colors. I could have each side a different color if I wanted to. You could do so many different things. So let's fold this over and try this in. I think we are, we are almost there. I think one more row and we are done. So I'm gonna go back to color A for the last row. And then we're going to, because that's the sort of, but I like this way as well, because actually the color B is framing color A, but I think I'm just going to bring color A back with just one row, which is only going to be in between the seed beads. So it's not going to be, not going to be too much. And then we're going to add the, and we're going to sew the front and the back together inside the donut. So it's going to stay on there nice and secure. So one more row of color A. Uh, Dorothy is saying, this bell reminds me of the designs of the Star Checks uniforms. Absolutely. And I, we've been just watching the new Star Trek with Simon not long ago. Don't ask me what is it called. <laughs> I watched every episode with him. Is it the not, not, not next generation? I don't know what's what. Oh, you, have, you have to help me out. What's the new series? I know it's Star Trek. It's like it's set in the future. Like way, way ahead the future. I 
I just got a little knot on there, so I'm just gonna unfold that and then add the next seed bead. Right, we are almost at the end of this side. Discovery, yes, that's that's the one. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne. Right, and the last side. You can you, you can absolutely use Delica beads or treasure beads for this one. Any uniform beads are going to be good. You you can try with like less uniform and cheaper brands, but you are not, not going to have the nice and flat fabric like texture because one of the beads or other or the other beads if it's smaller and larger is going to be pulling your design to a certain way. Uh, Non-uniform beads are great for different projects as well. They, they're not bad just because they're not uniform. They're just great for other... And some, some of the other projects, there are projects that are there where you have to use non-uniform beads because otherwise it's not going to look great. So with uniform beads, it's just to... So they, the, each one of the beads, like they fit their own projects, but for this one you want uniform beads. So you want like something your Toho. I love Toho and that's what we stock and I use Toho all the time. So Toho Rand ones or this is Toho Rand ones. Toho Treasures will work. Your Mukis is going to work. Muki Delica is going to work. Your Matsumas are going to work. Although Matsumu I think it's a little bit lesser quality than Toho. They would work as well. You could try with your check seed beads. They are a little bit less so quality than Taho as well. You could try with mill heels. You could try with all sorts of different things. If you just want to have a go, have a look what you got in your stash. And just have a go at it. Oh, Dorothy is saying, I only watched the original one with Captain Kirk and Spock. So I did put it to Simon. That because like we don't really watch normal TV, we like you know, like to watch something on on demand because we are like so busy and here and there and everywhere and we never re really have time like you know working. Uh, I'll work some evenings and other evenings I can sort of I'm still working and beading, but we can watch something in the background. And I did put it to Simon to let's watch Star Trek from the beginning, from the very first episode. Because I think there's like 200 something episodes. And Simon said, no. <laughs> Maybe. When we retire, we have time, so we'll watch it all back. But the new new series is, is good. And I really enjoyed the movies because I, I never, when I was like growing up, I was never, I've never had anybody around me who was into Star Trek. So it was never really introduced me um, when I was young. And now it's, I watched uh, Star Trek movies with Simon because he did watch the original series back then. And I really, really enjoyed it. So, and we watched this series as well. I just think I like Star Trek, but not really Enterprise and Deep Space Nine. So I, I don't I don't know any of the old ones. I never watched them. I loved Farscape. So when when I was that that, that was out in the end of the nineties. When when I was I suppose oh, I added two seed beads there. Just back up. So I love I love that series. I think sometimes it depends like what's on tv as you go and growing up or what what's the current one just take one seed bit of an accidentally added to seed bead might be almost at the end and going together uh friendly thing i love john luke picard yeah, that was that was when Simon was watching that. I I I seen a few episodes of that one, but I didn't uh, didn't really. I think I only watched about three or four episodes with him, and then like what happens is he gets fed up to wait for me so we can watch it together. <laughs> so he just like watches it on his own. 
And then he tells me like what's happened, but of course I forget. So. And I'm just adding the last bead and guess just what happened. I just got a knot on there. It's typical, isn't it? When you're doing the last one. So when you want to undo a knot and I'm quickly going to show you this little trick. So don't try to pick it with one needle. What I usually do, I stick one needle in there and another one and pull it apart. Pull the knot apart. Otherwise, you're going to end up with either piercing your thread if you're just trying to pull it with one. And it's much quicker with the two as well because you're going around in circle is this not still on there still wrapped around it because you're going around in circles your thread can twist it up and I'll show you a trick for that one as well that had to untwist your thread let's pull that seed bead through that's it so I'm gonna hold Just on the needle there as I'm pulling it up because I don't want this to can you see how twisted that is so I'm gonna have to go in and on twist that last little bit so I can pull it through there we go It always happens on the last one, doesn't it? Right, to untwist your thread, and just make sure that it's not twisted at the bottom. To untwist your thread, what you're going to have to do, that's it, it's right. So untwist your thread, what you have to do, and I'm just going to cut to the main cam very quickly. You're going to hold your beadwork up, so just dangling down here, can you see that? And then I'm going to hold the thread I'm going to hold the needle, the thread just underneath the needle, so I'm not putting stress on the needle, on the eye of the needle as well. I'm going to take index finger and thumb, hold it together in my beadwork and pull it down. And as I'm pulling it down, can you see that my beadwork is starts to untwist? And that's my thread is untwisting. And you get knots in your beadwork often because this happens, your thread is gets twisted up. So I do that a couple of times just to make sure there is no twist in there and then we're good to go and now when I'm adding the bell together it's not going to I'm not going I'm less likely to get knots I'm not going to say I'm not going to get knots at all but I'm less likely to get knots right let's go back down and I'll show you how to sew the front end together with the back so let's just try it in I think that's the perfect size now. Now when you're adding your front end to the back, you can see there is a depth to the pendant, the pendant or donut or anything you want to add it through itself. If I just was adding this on a crystal pendant and I would sew in from one side to another, connect the back and then come back to the front. Because I'm adding it onto a donut and I'm going to pull this out for you to see, we need to create this little bit of beadwork here to be able to, so you, you should, you, otherwise you would be able to see your thread path right underneath it and we don't want that. So we're just going to add a few beads, I'm going to show you another color, um, just to cover those seed that, that's covered, uh, and it's two different colors here, cover the thread path over there. So as you are coming out of your very last bead, your corner bead you stepped up now depending of how your work started to buckle when you started your project this might be actually on the side so but by the side what i mean you might be up here and then you know you need to connect the front and the back back to each other there's two things what you can do you can either weave your thread down to the end or you can flip your work if you're like a flip it like a book so I'm gonna push pull hold on to two sides and I'm gonna push one side down and then bring the other one over can you see that how I flipped it and then you will be on the right side to add your front and your back together so as I'm coming out of this bead I'm just gonna pick up there's a couple of different ways you can do it but I'm just gonna pick up three seed beads and I'm gonna go through 
the loop on the donut. And then I'm gonna come, I'm gonna turn my work around. So I'm coming out of that one, three seed beads, loop on the donut, and I'm gonna come up through the corner on the other side. Can you see that? And when I pull this up, the seed beads are just gonna sit there in the middle. And then I'm just turn this around. As I'm coming up of this corner, uh, you can either weave your thread around, but I just quite like to go down the corner. So I'm just the side by side. I went through the other side. Look, the thread path coming up, going, turning our threads around in the corner. I'm going to pull this tight. Again, I'm going to pick up three seed beads. I'm going to sew it through the other side and the donut, turning at the same time, and then come through this corner here. Just like that and pull this tight. And with that, we added little seed beads at the bottom. Now, I like to reinforce this. So I like to sort of go backwards and forwards a couple of times. You can even create a thread path between those beads if you wanted to have it more like a solid piece. So if I'm turn around, I'm like doing like a little square stitch part, I guess. I'm going to turn my thread around again. I'm just going through the first, the that bead and the first bead and then pull this through. And then I'm going to loop back on myself, coming back that second and the corner, not three, just two. And then I created a thread, and when I pull this around, you can see I created a thread path between these two beads as well. And then I can do that for the last two as well. So they always going to sit nicely and tightly together. So again, I'm going to go down. But every single time you do this, you are reinforcing that bottom part. And I'm going to come back through here. Don't have to go back through all the way. And just adding those few. You could have done like a little square stitch bit before you started. Then you join the front and the back. It's really a sub to you. How you want to do it. But that's it. And all is it left to do once you're finished is to sew your ends off with a one thread knot. And that's it. That's it. That's how you make it. So do have a go. Have a go with one color, two colors, multiple colors. Check out the kits on the website because we got 10% off uh, at the moment until stock last. We only got the donuts in the... Let me just zoom out so I can get the other colors in for you. We only got them, the donuts in the kits themselves. So look, that's the difference between I added an extra color on there and that's the pair of it. So each one of those will come with two colors of donuts, two colors of seed beads, link in the description. So do check it out. I really do love it because it just gives that little bit more intricate on the top. Tomorrow we are creating craft. We launching this kit for a spiral staircase um, necklace there I, I really do love it let me just show the stitch up front in really really nice and delicate you can do it for necklaces you can do it for bracelets you can do it for a lot of um, different jewelry pieces thank you very much for watching me today go and check out the website oh everything beautiful oh i love it Oh, I was on the last feed. Great tip, Bob. Oh, thank you. I did a checkout. They, uh, the this can added on the checkout. So this can is they changed our website, so it's not showing on the price itself. But when you go when you go to the checkout, it will show you the ten percent off from there. Is the chain on the website yet? No, we're launching on Create and Craft tomorrow, and I'm sure it will. We will, we will have it on our website as well. It's using those lovely hexagonal beads and it's just really great how like minimal materials can create a really nice chain weave. Right, thank you very much. Tomorrow is Sarah's gonna be with you tomorrow and I will be back on Thursday with a with a tour of my craft room. So we really need to tidy up and put everything away. I've got all the links lined up for you that whatever like I got because I did really had to think it through and like had like 
one half an inch gap <laughs> on the side of the cupboard so it was really tight but I did it but I, I went through and looked all sorts of different solutions creating uh, what time is on create and craft Peter Lind is asking it's 9 a.m and I'm going to do it through Zoom. So I'm going to be here from my craft room to create and craft. And we decided at the beginning of this live that I'm going to turn my table back. So you'll be able to say create spelled out on my cupboard. I hope, I hope, hope they like it. Hope they will like it. Yes, it is 9 a.m. Usually 9 a.m. Yes. Wednesday morning at 9 a.m. Usually it's Julia Aaron on Creating Craft. Right, everybody, have a lovely, lovely day. And I see you very soon, everybody. Take care. Bye.